All right, good morning, guys. We are live. I'm gonna give you guys just a few minutes to kind of um, join in, get set. Um, if you guys saw the um, uh, the little note I put out there, we are going to be playing with some Rainbow Distress Oxide. Good morning. Um, and just having some rainbow fun. I couldn't really decide on a color scheme, so I decided let's just use all of them today. Um, in the description, I did go ahead and put um, the names of all the colors. Um, but the colors I'm using today is um, Festive Berries, Dried Marigold, Fossilized Amber, Cracked Pistachio, Mermaid Lagoon, um, and Seedless Preserves. And then we're also going to be using um, the Star Shape Demi Plate from the Faith Impressions line. Um, and probably just a few random uh, texture plates that I happen to have laying around. Um, so just my Stampy and, you know, my favorite. And I've got a few other ones just kind of laying around here. Um, we're also going to be using, because I just got it, what did I do with the other part? So I just bought this set from um, Joann's. It's super fun. It is from um, Tim Holtz. Oh, here it is. And it is this, it's a stencil and stamp set. Um, but I love this stamp set. Can you kind of see it a little better? But it's very like grungy. Um, my latest video that I shared in the, um, hey Marilyn, um, that I shared in the, um, what am I thinking of? That I shared in the group yesterday, I used this uh, stencil and stamp set. And I'm just loving the kind of grunginess. The stencils, eh, it's okay. It'd be what it'd be. Um, but I love, I really bought this set for this um, stencil set. And so I think we're going to use that to kind of layer over our little thing here. Um, so I'm super, oh, dropping stuff. All right, so you can see I was kind of testing out my colors to make sure we kind of have our little rainbow. I really wish I had all of the Distress Oxides in kind of brighter colors because these are a little bit more muted. But hey, it be what it be. Um, and to kind of help with um, uh, my kind of flow, I'm going to do something I don't normally do and I'm going to... Good morning. Um, I'm going to draw a little line right here just to kind of help because I want to do kind of just a big star pattern um, across my entire page here. And of course I am in the large format um, illustrating Bible. I'm really bad about calling it the illustrated Bible and I did that for the longest time and then found out I was totally wrong. Good morning. Um, so I, those are just kind of a guideline to kind of help me keep things. Um, we'll see if it's necessary or if it works, but my brain seems like something I should do. Um, and so we're going to have some fun. We're going to do a full background. The other thing I do want to do is I want to make sure that the scriptures that I'm using. So I'm kind of going a little typical here, but it's kind of what I wanted to do. Um, and so we're in Genesis chapter 9. And of course, it's the story of Noah and where God, it is chapter 9 verses 12 through 17. So it is where God is telling Noah about the covenant and the rainbow. And I don't know, I was just feeling very... God's promisey and rainbowy and all the colors this morning. So um, that's kind of just what I wanted to do today. Um, I am going to take some washi. Um, and just to make sure that it doesn't stick to my page, you can't really see what I'm doing. But I'm taking it and actually putting it on my pants just to um, de-sticky it just a little bit. Um, that way, I just want to be able to just kind of mask that off. But I like to de-sticky it just a little bit because sometimes you never know how long the washi is going to sit on there. And you want to, like I just showed you, you want to be able to kind of pop it off there easy. And it really depends on your particular washi. Some washi is aggressive with their sticky and some washi um, has like no sticky whatsoever. Um, but I kind of wanted to just 
protect that little area that I'm going to be using as my key verses. Thank you for writing that down for me, Dana. I appreciate it. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of just what my heart was on. And yesterday was Father's Day. And just keep it real with y'all. Father's Day is never super easy for me. Um, part of it deals with my being adopted. And part of it deals with um, just some relational issues I've had with my adoptive father. And it's just been a, it's been a journey. And so a long, for a really long time, I struggled with, um, um, I struggled with the idea of a heavenly father because my issues with my earthly fathers were was so corrupted, um, and so I always would filter God through my filter of issues with. Good morning, Brenda. Um, I would filter my issues with my earthly fathers. Um, I would filter God through that, and so um, it was just. I don't know, maybe that's why God's promise is so heavy on my, my heart this morning is just, just that idea, that promise that no matter what happens here, no matter what, um, what happens with your earthly father or whatever it is, that it's just that he's still there and that his promise is there. And, you know, and I kind of like, okay, this is a random thing and I'm, I'm, uh, just kind of popped into my brain, but I just happen to have this idea, God inspiration, Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it, that, the colors of the rainbow are so varied, just like all those things that we go through in life. And it's like each color represents maybe um, a different promise um, and a different uh, uh, a different agreement with God that you're going to make it through and that he's going to help you through it. Um, and so maybe that's why. I don't know. Maybe I'm just needing a little reassurance of God's promise or maybe someone in this group is needing a little reassurance of God's promise. But that's kind of where my brain is today. Um, yay, we have more people that have joined us. So those of you that are just now joining us, we are in Genesis chapter 9, verses 12 through 17. We are discussing God's promise today. So I would love if you guys would throw in the chat. Um, Maybe what God's promise means to you. Maybe something that he is working with you with. Um, kind of while we're going through this process this morning. Um, for those of you again that have just joined us. We're going to be playing with a rainbow of distress oxides. Um, we're going to be using festive berry, dried marigold, fossilized amber, cracked pistachio, mermaid lagoon, and seedless preserves. But of course you can do this with any of the inks that you happen to have or acrylic paint. I just really wanted to do it this way because I want to give it kind of a distressy, grungy look. Um, and if you're familiar with distress oxides, they react with water. Um, so it'll kind of give it a, a distressed look here in just a little bit. And so we're going to start. And for those of you that just joined us too, I did put kind of a, I guess an X marks the spot situation across my middle of my page so that I can do my best. I planned a little bit. Um, and so I wanted to do my best to kind of keep my line straight. Again, it might not turn out perfect. We're gonna find out together. And so I'm gonna start kind of up here. And we're going to kind of just do a whole rainbow situation down the and across our page. Now, of course, the distress oxides are um, transparent, um, but you can see I've added some washi to it, to our page, because I really just want to make sure that that those featured verses um, really are bold and bright. And so that's why that pink is kind of going across the middle if you're just joining us. I just wanted to make sure that, um, I don't know, I wanted them to be bright. And I think I made that one slightly crooked, but that's okay. It's not going to be perfect. So I am just going into my stamp pad. And kind of doing our little star. What's great is once we kind of get them all there, it's going to look less like a star and kind of more just like a graphic pattern on the back of our 
project here and I'm going to kind of stamp off over here on the side just to make sure I get all that off. Kind of wish I'd start with the red in the corner but hey it's too late now friends. All right so let's go with our dried marigold next. All right, yes that is the right one. And then we're just going to continue Just, and this is actually just a plain stamping acrylic block. Nothing super fancy. And we're going to kind of displace this. And I'm kind of doing it, obviously, kind of the colors at a diagonal. Um, I kind of just wanted to keep it kind of funky. I thought about just doing stripes across of colors. Um, so it would kind of have more of that rainbow feel. But then decided, let's make it just a little bit more graphic. It just adds a little, a little extra something, something to it. And it's not going to be perfect. There's probably going to be some that are off center, offline, but that's okay. This would also be super fun to, if you're a scrapbooker, um, to do on like a 12 by 12 um, or whatever your your soup du jour of scrapbooking is and kind of create your own background. Cute. Good deal. I'm going to scoot that up just a little bit. I realize it's, I was trying to show you my rainbow, but then I didn't put my Bible in the full frame. There we go. And then I'm just going to stamp off on a piece of paper over here. Which you don't necessarily have to as far, but I just, I don't want to mix colors on my ink pad. So that's the only reason I'm kind of stamping that off. And then we're going to come in with, I always forget the name of this one, is this is a fossilized amber. And we're going to do the same thing. It's a little repetitive, but that's okay. But it's kind of, sometimes doing repetitive things can be um, almost like meditative or prayerful. Um, I know whenever I used to do a lot of, um, when I was on the Graphic 45 design team years ago, um, I was known for fussy cutting, which is that craziness of um, like cutting out all the little images from paper. Um, yay, welcome Judy. Um, and so there was just always something for me. I know a lot of people hate fussy cutting, but for me, there was just always something kind of almost meditative and calming about cutting out all of those little intricate things and doing something repetitive. And so it just, I don't know, it always just kind of worked for me and made me happy. And so I did it a lot because it was fun for me. Other people, oh my gosh, they would rather have their hair set on fire than fussy cut. <laughs> oh, I put that back on there weird. Yeah, erk. Boom, boom. So we are just continuing to make our little rainbow here. And my hand is being weird holding this suddenly. I think of there we go. And then since we're kind of at that edge, we're gonna take our other colors and work in like almost like a reverse rainbow. So I'm gonna start with clean my plate off here. So we're going to start with our Mermaid Lagoon going the opposite way and kind of go in reverse, I almost said reverse rainbow, reverse rainbow order. I swear I've had at least one cup of coffee today. Apparently I probably need more. So we're just going to put a little blue dabby right there um, because that's kind of where it would live. do that and kind of creep our little way down like we did all the others. Mermaid Lagoon even in Distress Ink is um, one of my favorite colors. 
because it's such a, I mean, they, first of all, they couldn't have picked a better name. It's just such a great and rich blue, but it's like a, it's like a happy blue. Does that make sense? That's what my brain thinks. It's a happy little blue. Then one last little blue guy right there. Perfect. Clean off our blue before we go to our seedless preserves, which I've had this one for a while and I'm trying to remember if I've ever even used it. Well, apparently I've used it at some point for something. <laughs> and so we're going to come in here again, add our little point of purple so we're not losing that consistency. Rainbows are making me happy, y'all. So when we were on our girls trip, um, I took my girls to the Mall of America. Um, it was super fun. But for some weird reason, we got into watching My Little Pony's Friendship is Magic while we were there. Um, and so uh, there's one little character on it. If you don't have kids, you're going to learn something um, called Rainbow Dash. And so she uh, obviously has the rainbow hair and she just rainbows in the sky and she can fly. Um, and my oldest daughter, I think that's her favorite because she's like the sporty spice of the, the pony world. And so uh, I think that's why she likes it so much. Okay, so we've got one more row here. So it looks like if we're going in the order, I should have flipped those two. Oh, well, we're just going to add green. You know, that's what happens when lives. Sometimes you do things in the right order. Sometimes you don't. But that's okay. All right. So we're going to just finish it off. And it kind of works as you got a, a little green on both ends. Kind of like little bookends. Oh, that is so fun, y'all. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> yes, love me some rainbows. I love the idea too, like there's people that do like the rainbow hair, um, but from a, a hair standpoint, first time you wash that, it's going to be hideous. So you can take, do it, do your nice little Instagram picture, um, but the first time you wash it, all those colors are just going to smoosh together. And so <laughs> that's just my, my thought on that. All right, so we're going to remove our washi tape and kind of expose our... Oh our verses here that we are using and being very careful because like I said some washi tape is a little more aggressive than other washi tape ah, if I can grab it there it goes sometimes you gotta just be gentle kind of wiggle it there we go perfect okay so now we're gonna have the little fun distressing time actually I'm gonna go back in real quick and these were my look kind of little guidelines to get that first line right so we're just gonna go in and kind of erase those not that you can see them a whole lot but I can <laughs> so we're just gonna erase those and then we're gonna go in there's What's funny is there's a few of my fingerprints in here. I've had that discussion with my husband that if I ever go missing, I'm pretty sure amongst all of the art projects in my studio, there's probably enough DNA um, and enough um, fingerprints that they would be able to find me. And so I'm like, I'm like as many times as I burned myself or stuck my finger in glue or paint or any of that kind of stuff. Um, They'll find me. They have it. So I'm using um, a fluffy paintbrush. It's a well-loved paintbrush because you can tell the paint the paint on the actual paintbrush has come off. Um, it's kind of a watercolor brush because I like it because it gives me a lot of movement whenever I, I do something like this. So I've got some clean water. I swear it's clean. It's just, well, it was clean when I put it in, but this is my my paint water thing and it's it needs, it needs a little bath. It needs a little love. And so I'm just going to dip some of that color and oh wait you know what do I want to do that first yeah it'll be fine sorry 
thinking out loud. So we're just going to take it, and this is how I like to do paint flicks. Everybody kind of has their own thing. I like to actually, because if I feel like if you go like this, you don't get as much, but if you give, if you kind of use your hand and tap it on there, I feel like it gives um, some resistance and allows the, the water or the paint or whatever you happen to use just to flick a little bit easier. And so if you're not familiar with Distress Oxides, um, the way they are formulated is when you add water, the pigments actually react with it and it starts to give it kind of a, a dabbled Distress look because it starts to pull and dilute that ink um, in those spots where the water hits. And so it just gives it a really cool, um, almost like patina a distressed kind of look. It's one of the coolest products they've come out with. I think there's a couple of other brands, and if you guys know, feel free to throw it in the comments. Um, I know there's a few other brands that have come out with similar, what they call water reactive inks. Um, I haven't used them, but I'm assuming they would be similar. And also, I just had this idea, if anyone has like done an entire page in Distress Oxide and then have anyone try to like take a wet brush and then actually like draw in it or paint in it to kind of get the same kind of distressed look. That would be super cool to know as well. So I'm kind of just, for lack of a better word, I'm just flinging it onto here just trying to get, make sure I've got some distressing on all of my colors here. I also, you might be noticing, I did not prep my page, um, like hit it with clear gesso or anything like that. Um, and that's mainly because we're not doing anything super heavy. It's, and so I usually do, I didn't this time. All right, um, it's gonna get loud for just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and get this completely dry so that we can move on to the next step. So talk amongst yourselves for a second. Yay. Let's see if I can get this up where you guys can see. Well, you probably you can see pretty good. I mean, look how cool that kind of, it gives it like a water droplet kind of look. I am loving that. I think I'm going to try, it seems like the blue and the purple have reacted a little bit better, or it might just be me. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit more up here to my yellows in that corner um, and see what that does. Because I feel like the blues and the purples have reacted really well. So I don't know if it's because I put more water on those or could just be the nature of the beast with that particular colors. Maybe they don't react as as violently as the purples and the blues, but I just think it's super cool. And you get that very kind of watercolor style and technique, um, but within a, doing it this way, by applying it with your gel press plate, you get it in a um, just kind of a small concentrated area because I mean let's be honest if you tried to paint that little triangle um, with watercolor that would be difficult or maybe for other people it would be easy for me it would be difficult because I'm not super great at watercolor um, okay yeah so I added a little more to my orange and to my yellow and it's definitely reacting more you can kind of see it's starting to lighten and give that grunge look. So we're going to kind of let that sit for just a second. Um, oh, on the subject of watercolor, if you are someone like me that's not super great at watercolor, um, I did a video, I must say two weeks ago, um, for gel press where um, I showed four, I think it's four, I'm going to say four, um, ways to fake watercolor techniques using your gel press plate um, and so if you haven't had a chance to go see that i'll post it in the group later today um, because y'all know me i mean i try bless my heart um, but watercolor is just not my thing and so i wanted to come up with some techniques and some ways that you could get that um, watercolor effect without the stress of trying to manually manipulate your watercolors to get it um, or without making mud which is what I would always end up whenever I tried to do kind of that watercolor flowy background. Um, so I'll post that for you guys today um, so you guys can check that out. Okay I'm going to hit it with a heat gun again real quick. Um, Judy did you watch it? I think yeah, were you the one that said that you watched it? Yes it's I mean not to toot my own horn but 
I liked it and I always am like I know if I like it and I'm excited about it I think that comes across in my videos and I think it I think hopefully if I'm excited about it other people will be too <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Judy said she watched it twice. <laughs> that's funny. Thanks. Make me look good, guys. Go watch my video so that my numbers look good on the YouTube channel. <laughs> Go watch um, the other videos we have going on, too. Um, Marjolaine, uh, one of our Faith Impressions uh, design team members, had a video last week. Um, I'm going to find the name of it real quick so I can send you guys that way. Not that one. I think it had to do with resist something, but my brain is not working at the moment. And if you haven't subscribed to our gel press, um, uh, our gel press YouTube channel, make sure you go out there and do that. And we have over 20,000 subscribers, which is so awesome. And let's see. There it is. Um, Marja Lane did heat embossed resist with gel press in her Bible. So go check that one out. And then our other Faith Impressions designer, um, Renee Davis, has won this. Um... You're back in the office. <laughs> Well, it's always hard to figure out like what's gonna work best. I tried to do, I think last live was a um, an evening one and I definitely found I have, there's more people that are available kind of around this time, this kind of lunch time. Um, so it's kind of, it's you know, I want everyone to be able to participate, but thank goodness eh, that uh, live replays exist. So you can always come back and watch it later if, if you miss it, so. All right, so now we're gonna come in and we're gonna go back to our little thing here. And we're gonna start adding some texture. And what I love about doing it this way is because since I've got my little, uh, my demi plate and I've got it on an acrylic block, I can just do this and just line it back up. Give it a little. Now you can also with most mediums you could stamp your black ink on there add your acrylic paint and then just do it all in one step however i found because distress oxide for whatever reason the the chemical content of it um it's not a super big fan of that particular technique um so i really if i'm using distress oxides i like to do the stamping and the um the texture adding um as a separate step um because i just really find it gives a better image now if i'm using like you know like acrylic paint or any of that kind of stuff um then i find doing my stamping and then my ink and all that kind of or my paint all at the same time is fine i just realized i probably shouldn't have taken that washi tape off yet so i'm going to put a little guard here and this is just kind of just a fun way, just adding just some different textures and adding a little bit of that black to kind of give some pop. Um, I'm gonna walk across the studio real quick and grab just a couple of other options for some, some textures that I have. Let's see what I've got going on over here. Let's use this. Oh, I like that one. Hold on, I'm gonna grab something else. Hey! I also just found something I forgot I owned. It is a um, from Journal Studio from, I believe, American Crafts, and I found it actually at Walmart. Um, it's a date stamp that kind of lets you put the date, and you can do memories or a little heart. Um, I forgot, and I had that. So that's exciting. So I just kind of walked across the studio to my little stamp collection and just grabbed just a few random things to play with here. This is one of my favorites. I just think it's, you know, it's like a film where actually, it's, obviously I've had it for a while because it's got paint and stuff all over it. So we're just going to kind of stamp it on there and just kind of pick and choose where you want to add hints of black. And then we can kind of 
And what's great about using it this way with an acrylic block is you can really get the alignment um, really well. Um, so you don't, you can still have all that white space, which I think really helps this project um, to pop and kind of makes the, the rainbow colors even more vibrant. And I've got a little left on there, so let's just add that little bit right there. And it's gonna look like you did this print kind of all at one time. And so you're gonna have your texture, you're gonna have your color. The black is a great contrast to your, uh, to your bright rainbow colors. And if you didn't see it, I did put all of the colors of Distress Oxides that I used in the comments for this video or in the, the title description section. Um, that way, in case you want to do something similar, um, you can use the, the same colors I used or just feel free to use whatever colors you want to use. Originally, this was going to be um, kind of an ombre situation, like I wanted to use different pinks. Um, and that kind of stuff. And then I just really decided I kind of just wanted to do more of, that's when I kind of was digging through all my colors and I was like, ooh, or let's do rainbow. And I'm, I'm feeling, feeling the rainbow today, y'all. And just, you know, I kind of talked about it earlier about just going through a season of, um, little bit of a season of forgiveness and reconciliation and kind of just relying on God's promise that he's going to work all things for his good, which I know that's not the scripture we're doing, but you know, this was, this is the first kind of outward sign of God's promise in the Bible. And so Sometimes we need a reminder that from the very beginning, there was a promise that he would be there for us and he would take care of us and he would, um, he would just hold us in those times when things are hard and things are difficult and maybe people are hard and people are difficult. Um, and so I think that is kind of why I'm, um, I don't know, I'm drawn to this particular scripture at the moment. Um, do, 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 do. Where do I want to put this one? Where did I put that washi tape? I took it off and then did something with it. Oh, I wadded it up. Dang it. Oh, well, it'll be okay. Where are we going to put this one? Sorry, I'm squirreling. I'm going to grab my washi tape again if I knew what I did with it. There it is. I'm going to add just a little piece right here because I want to put this one right there, but I don't want to accidentally cover up those words. I should have just left the washi tape down to begin with. <laughs> My bad. Uh, do that. Perfect. It's good use for washi tape. I'm gonna add this guy right here. You could also go in and just start adding like um, contrasting colors, like on the oranges and the yellows, add blue, um, just to give it a different pop and continue that rainbow theme. That would also be super cool. There we go. And I'm going to save this and put it right back over on that side so I can do the same thing over here. Um, in case I didn't mention, I am using the Rangers Archival ink, which of course is kind of my go-to for most of things. I'm not sure how I said most of things, but you know what I mean. Um, it's kind of my go-to for most things, um, mainly because I like being able to go in um, and just be able to add layers because, you know, if you've ever watched my lives, like. Sometimes I plan, sometimes I kind of plan, sometimes I don't plan. And so I don't want to get to a point where I want to um, add something and then not be able to add it because I um, would ruin the inked image that I had just put down. So it's one of the reasons it's kind of my go-to. So while I'm chatting, I'm just continuing that stamping the black onto my plate and then because it is clear going in and just 
adding it to our project here. And I'm going to give this a little cover. Should have left the washi tape down, but that's okay. This is getting the job done too, so that's all that matters, right? <laughs> um, let's see. What other textures do I have hanging around here? I don't want to do that one. I don't want to do that one. I think I'm going to do this little guy. Some little polka dotties. And I'm going to just line it up. Give it a little smoosh. Perfect. And I've got a little bit of that left on this plate. So I think I'm just going to dab it right on that blue one. So now I have to decide, do I want to add, do I want to add a texture to all of it or just kind of leave it partially textured? I can't really decide. Hmm. It's going to take a lot to do all of them, but we might. Might as well. We're here. We're friends. We're family. Let's just do them all. Boom. Then let's see, let's add, let's add this polka dot right here. And let's get this guy. And really, you don't even have to do this step and kind of add the textures. I mean, you guys know me, I'm um, the most stuff, the mo better. Um, but even just leaving it how we kind of started with just the um, just the rainbow background still would be beautiful um, and would definitely bring across the idea that we are going for and I just had a, an idea that I thought you know was a kind of a cool concept you know we're discussing promise today and we're discussing um, how the rainbow is a promise um, but in the New Testament the star as in the star of Bethlehem was the beginning of a new promise so we're kind of almost well I'd say unintentionally but I'm sure God had intention and if this was his doing and not mine um, you know almost incorporating two promises in one by incorporating the star and incorporating the uh, the rainbow kind of together. We're kind of doing almost like an Old Testament meets New Testament promise. And so that kind of popped into my brain while I'm doing this. Alright, I think we're pretty close. I think I'm going to leave a few of them um, naked, for lack of a better word. I just felt like earlier there was too many of them without some kind of image in it. So let's do just a couple more. I don't want to do that one. We're going to do this pokey dotty. Put him right here. And I need something right there. Which one am I going to put? Kind of have every, oh, I already have swirlies. Okay, I'm gonna add some swirlies. I actually love this swirly one, but I cannot tell you where I got it. I've had it for such a long time. I want to say it might be graphic 45, but I couldn't tell you. But I like it. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna add one more, and that is gonna be. Let's do this one. My big script stamp here. Put him right here. Awesome. So we've got a nice combo of um, some of them left open with no texture and some of them with texture. And it's kind of just adding to the, the kind of overall rainbow but kind of muted kind of distressed thing we got going on here i'm going to hit it with a heat gun normally i wouldn't but just for the sake of if i want to add something else here in a minute i don't want to um i want to make sure that archival ink is completely dry 
We are playing with all the colors of the rainbow today. <laughs> okay, so now I kind of have some decisions to make. I'm kind of loving it, but I'm trying to decide um, how much more layers we need. Um, I kind of got a little arsenal of random um, pens and paint pens. I have recently rediscovered that I still own a ton of these uh Pit artist pens, which I do use a lot, um, but I forgot I have a bunch of these Pit artist pens. They're called the Big Brush. So there's some some thick daddies um, that are super great for a variety of things. But a lot of people would use them to write, like color in things on their stamps and then use it for a stamp. That's kind of why it's a little bit bigger, but it's just like the Pit Artist Pins. They are um, wa they are waterproof and archival and light fast and all that kind of stuff. But I kind of had forgotten that I had a, a decent little collection here. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, I found them and I was like, hey, I still have that. Hey, I have a silver and a gold. Let's see what happened. Oh, apparently at some point, friends, I bought like this entire little metallic situation. I wonder if they still work. Let's find out together, shall we? <laughs> Let's see if they still work. I don't even know what kind of, okay, so they're kind of a, can you see that? Kind of a, 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 a little bullet tip kind of situation. Ooh, they do still work. Y'all, I probably have had these for eight to 10 years and they probably haven't even been uncapped in like four or five. <laughs> Well, that's excitement. Maybe we should add some metallics to this. That could be fun. Let's see. You know what? Let's go with gold. Since we are doing a rainbow theme. And the whole gold at the end of the rainbow kind of situation. We'll kind of go with that. Cute. This will be fun. Okay. So, now the... Let's use this to kind of emphasize our box of scripture. For those of you that are just joining us, we are in Genesis chapter 9 verses 12 through 17 discussing God's promise. And so um, if you guys have anything you want to throw in about that, I think I'm, I would love an open discussion about, about promise, about what it means to you. Um, Maybe what, you know, maybe a time he's brought a promise forth or maybe a promise you're still waiting on. I know sometimes that's the hardest part is the God you promised X, Y, Z. And it's, it's, Lord, it's been a hot minute and I haven't seen it come. And it's even it's so much harder whenever... God's promised you X, Y, Z, and it's just not your time yet, and, but you see Susie Q at church, I don't know if that's actually anybody's name, um, getting the X, Y, Z that God promised you. It's such a hard season to be in. If any of you guys are in that, just know that you are seen, you are understood, and that is definitely just a hard place to be in when you see other people getting your promise or if, let me rephrase that it feels like other people are getting your promise but God's got plenty of promises to go around so never feel like you've been forgotten or forsaken or any of that kind of stuff um so while I'm kind of chatting I'm actually going in with this it's just gold um, and just adding kind of a just on the left side, kind of almost like a shadow. I'm hoping it'll give it kind of a shadow, but a pop at the same time. Um, like I said, I kind of picked the gold because of that whole, we're working on a rainbow, and it's kind of, you know, the secular idea of gold at the end of the rainbow kind of thing. And, you know, everything's better with a little shimmer a little gold, little. I'm actually a silver or white gold person. I don't know if it's because I have so much yellow undertones in my skin that I just don't feel like white gold looks super great on me. This I do don't do super well with things that are 
um, like bright yellow either. Hi, welcome. Um, so I tend to, if I wear yellow, it's kind of more that warm mustard gold, but like a bright yellow. Not super great on the skin tone. I'm not sure how we got into that, but you know, I tend to squirrel. So I'm just kind of adding this around to kind of give my image a little pop and give it almost like a shadowed 3D effect. What's great is you can really do this with any color. I just happen to be using gold because I wanted to add that little bit of shimmer and that little bit of sparkle. Apparently I am having a total My Little Pony moment because I want the shimmer and the sparkle and the, I'm gonna add just a little hook to the top of all of these. Um, I don't know if any of your kids watch My Little Pony, but we have a running joke in my house um, that I'm basically a My Little Pony and um, Pinkie Pie is my spirit animal because I have pink hair and I like to throw parties. Oh, Miss Brenda, I'm so sorry. That is so hard. Now, I, we had that, I don't want to say that problem, sorry, that sounds insincere, but we had kind of a similar situation whenever, um, whenever I got pregnant with my son, we actually got pregnant four months after we got married, and um, so it was a, um, we love him, but he was a whoops baby, because um, no one told the newlywed that the antibiotics messed with your birth control, <laughs> that's how we got KJ, um, but probably... Not long before that, my oldest sister-in-law and brother-in-law, so my husband's brother and his wife, had just told us that they had been, at that point, had been trying to conceive for years. I mean, four or five years. I can't even remember. And so telling them that we were pregnant was one of the hardest things I have ever had to do in my life because I felt... I felt like it was a slap in the face to their struggle and what they had gone through and um and it was just hard like and they they struggled too because they wanted to be excited for us but it was just adding to their heart and she was super honest she was i mean she's like she's like i will be there she goes but it's going to be hard and i might not be there as much as I would like to be and I was like I completely understand and um, so that was one of the hardest things was trying to was telling her they've ended up having um, they have a, a fantastic how old is he 15 um, 15 year old now um, and so they were able to conceive finally but yeah it's definitely hard and she did the same thing on when it came to baby showers and that kind of thing she would send gifts she would do this but it was just it was too hard for her um, to attend. Miss Brenda, I just have a, a moment that I just really want to pray for your daughter. I don't know her name, um, but we're going to stop our project just for a second. And um, wherever you are, whether you're watching this on the replay or you're watching it now, um, we're just going to pray for Miss Brenda's daughter right now. Um, I just really feel just a burden to pray for her and her situation. So we're going to take a break from our project for just a second, guys. Okay, sorry about that. Well, sorry, not sorry. Um, I just really felt like that she needed to be prayed for, so I needed to throw that out there. Um, okay, back to our project. The granddaughter was adopted. Yes, so I actually, I'm an adopted kid. So um, my adopted mom, for all intents and purposes, um, was only ever able to conceive once in her entire life um, and she carried him to full term um, and then he was stillborn so it was um, August 1981 and so uh, and so uh, and then they finally decided to adopt and they adopted me and my sister in 83 sounds right february of 83 my brain math um and so oh i just love that you guys are reaching out to each other it's kind of in this 
I don't think there's as much of a stigma, I don't know if that's the correct word, so I apologize if it's not, um, about infertility, but I think it is still a super painful thing to talk about. Um, but it's definitely one of those, if you can find someone who's, who's going through it or has gone through it, because some of us are never going to understand that pain of failed pregnancy test after failed pregnancy test. And so, I mean, when we had my, we were trying to get pregnant with my middle daughter, so my oldest daughter, I mean, I was going through some, some health issues. That's when I got diagnosed um, with hypothyroid. And it took us like 10 months to get pregnant. And I thought that felt like forever. I mean, so I would never say that we dealt with quote unquote infertility, but just the idea of how hard that 10 months was for us, um, it would, I can't imagine going through that pain for years and years and years. Oh, you had a failed adoption. And that's hard too. I mean, in some ways, it's it's like a miscarriage because I mean you have this this plan you have this idea that I'm gonna have this baby I'm gonna have this child and then even even though the child is still there I'm like a miscarriage it's it's a relationship that's never gonna exist I mean it is so hard and I just hope that if that adoption if that adoption failed that it it failed for the right reasons. Maybe mom and dad got their act together and those kids are now safe um, or something like that. I mean, because it's hard, definitely. We discussed adopting a few times, um, even before I found out I was adopted. So part of my crazy story, if you guys don't know it, is I was 21 whenever I found out I was adopted. Um, so <laughs> that was interesting. And so it, uh, but even before we found out we were adopted, when my husband and I first started dating and we were, you know, discussing kids and marriage, you know, the idea of adopting was kind of always there. Um, and something that whether we could have biological kids, <gasps> Miss Cheryl's here. What's up? So Miss Cheryl, if you guys don't know, is our, um, the um, she has a fancy title and I can never remember what it is, but she is she is our Mac Daddy go to runs everything for um, gel press and our creative team and our social media and all that kind of stuff. So you guys give her some love because she keeps me sane and she has also been my mentor for oh my gosh Cheryl I don't even know how long she is like the person the go to person to ask art questions and ask what's the best way to do this like from a business standpoint um, and we are birthday twins we have the same birthday which is super awesome so Cheryl is amazing we love her bunches all right did I miss any of them I don't think I did I think they all have their little gold shadow this is making me happy. Yay! Okay, so we're going to add just a little bit more texture. So we've got our shadow over on the creative director. Thank you. Um, so you think we've been doing this together with gel press for like 14 months. And I mean, we've been friends and mentor, all that kind of stuff for, for years, but we've been doing this gel press thing um, as a as a kind of a tag team for like 14 months and I still can't remember your title. That is so sad. <laughs> don't judge. Don't judge. I'm tired all the time. Okay. No girl, no girl. I am, we are not adopting. We were, so we were discussing a, uh, Miss Brenda's daughter is struggling with some infertility. And then we got into the subject of adoption. And so I was just saying how I was adopted and telling a little bit of my story. Um, and that Kendall and I had discussed even before I found I was adopted that we would, um, that we would like to adopt at some point. So I don't know. It's one of those when it's the right time, God will let us know. We just don't feel like it's it's the right time yet. But um, it might 
someday you never know however i am 41 and um if uh, the idea of starting over with a baby kind of makes me not cool <laughs> so but no sure girl if i was adopting you'd be one of the first people to know because i would need some prayer girl <laughs> okay um yeah um so miss brenda cheryl might be a good person for you to, your daughter to talk to too um so so we've got our sorry i keep squirreling it's been a squirrely moment like i feel like i've been all over the place with y'all today but we are still making a pretty page so i'm very excited about this um so we've got our shadow kind of over on the left so i'm gonna go in with just a white sharpie paint pen and we are gonna um kind of add just a little bit of almost like a catch light shimmer whatever you want to call it to the other side so it kind of gives it a little bit more of a, a 3d pop and i'm trying to decide whether i even want to do a title or just kind of leave it as is because it kind of makes me happy where like it is so this is in case i didn't i think i did say but this is a sharpie it's a let me show you the end it is a water-based paint pen <laughs> we all know i'm all about squirreling and glitter so i mean it just is what it is um this is a sharpie um water-based paint pen and this is kind of the bigger tip i prefer the smaller one um but they're a little bit harder to find weirdly enough but obviously you could use a white gel pen or if you have a white posca pen that kind of thing um but it just kind of adds just a little another easy layer of texture so it kind of gives it a little I do love Care Bears too <laughs> I love me some Care Bears oh Liz girl you are my shiro you intentionally got pregnant 41 so you have a 23 a 24 year old and a five-year-old grandson it gets confusing <laughs> I feel that so funny story so my um my sister who is 14 months older than me um, got a surprise baby when she was 37 um, and so she will be her name is Scarlett she's adorable um, she Scarlett will be is that right yes yeah, so Scarlett will be six this year I think that sounds right that math is right I think um, and so um, but she at the time she had um, no, she'll be five this year, but she, at the time, she had an 11-year-old and a 12-year-old. Um, surprise, here's a baby. Um, and Scarlett was, was, not only was she a surprise baby, she was an expensive baby because she came um, 10 weeks early, was nine and a half weeks in the NICU and a whole thing. She is a miracle baby. Um, but, so she got, a, my sister got a surprise baby at 37, and then my best friend got a surprise baby at 37 and she uh, at the time she had a 12 year old a 13 year old and a 15 year old or 16 year old I can't remember her how old her oldest was um, and so when I was 37 because they're both just like a few years older than me the running joke was um, am I gonna complete the trifecta and also have a surprise baby at 37 and I was like well if Jesus decides that that is what we need to do after you picked me up off the floor i would be okay with it but sure not gonna try for one <laughs> and we did not which i'm totally fine with i think i would be okay if we did but i'm like i don't yeah I'm not gonna start over on purpose that's just just not feeling that but if god decided we needed to or if it was finally time to adopt i'd be down for that There we go. So my best friend, her story is kind of funny because her youngest, I think it was like two years ago, her youngest started kindergarten the same year that her oldest got married. And so that was a fun year for them. <laughs> okay, so I think, I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more with just a black pen and then we're pretty close to done. I think I'm just gonna go in and just add a little bit of black scribble kind of on the side where our shadow is just to kind of emphasize that shadow a little bit more 
And what's great is whether you have the Faith Impressions kit or you have just a regular gel press plate, or maybe you have one of the other petites, which are the sizes in between the demi plates that are in the Faith Impressions kit and the um, and the bigger plates. I mean, you could do this with any of them and just kind of make almost like a like I guess this kind of be like a tiled mosaic kind of thing. Um, and then that way you can use all the colors because if you're like me. I feel like I tend to gravitate towards um, kind of the same color palette. Do you guys feel like you do the same thing? You kind of gravitate towards the same color palette over and over. I mean, we know my, my go-to color palette is hot pink, yellow, and turquoise or some, some version of the, that trifecta. But what about you guys? Do you guys feel like you have like a, a go-to color palette and then you have all these other inks and acrylic paints that just sit there and be like, what about me? Use me. And so I think it's super fun sometimes to kind of step out of your, your normal color palette and try the rainbow or try, I think we've done in this group before where we've done the one color challenge which for some of us is super hard but we did a, a one a while back a long time ago where it was we just used blues um so that's always a good challenge for yourself if you're someone who tends to lean toward the same color palettes over and over i dropped my pen and over again um challenge yourself to only use blues or yellows or or you could pick your least favorite color. Everybody has a least favorite color. Um, use your least favorite color. Make Do the least favorite color challenge um, and kind of just see um, how God leads you. You might find a new color combo. It might reinforce the fact that, yes, I do hate that color and I'm so, it's still good. It's like me and corn. Here's a, here's a metaphor for you. Um, I hate corn. I know I like corn chips. I like corn tortillas. Um, I love popcorn, but like corn corn, like corn on the cob, canned corn, any of that kind of stuff, it's gross. I don't like it. Um, but every now and then, I'll give it a try again. You know, maybe my tastes have changed. They have not. I still hate corn, but sometimes you just have to try it to make sure that it's, it's still not for you. So maybe there's a color you hate or a color combo. I know there are some people that absolutely hate um, that whole purple issue. <laughs> Cheryl's like, I don't like purple. Um, maybe you should do a purple challenge, Cheryl, and see if it's still true. Now, I'm like, so sometimes we have to just figure out if it's still true or if we just have like this, this bias against something that maybe is from, you know, a past struggle. I was that way with running. Um, I used to think that I wasn't good at it and I hated it, um, but that mainly, but then when I started running, like, almost, it'll, be almost, it'll be 10 years this fall since I started running. I didn't start running until I was 31. Um, but I realized that the reason I thought I didn't run, couldn't run, didn't like running, really stemmed from, um, childhood trauma not to make this a therapy session but for me that's what it was it came from a time when i tried to run and someone that i respected looked at me and said well i could walk a mile faster than you can run a mile um and so i stopped running for oh my gosh math 17 years never even tried it so you know it's okay just question why you think things so miss mary lynn does not like orange okay <laughs> so miss judy has ptsd from wearing red all the time okay <laughs> so maybe your assignment this week is to play with some reds and mary lynn's is to play with some oranges and see what you can do with that and you might still hate it when you're done and that's okay it's okay to still hate it when you're done but you might find that you maybe don't hate it or maybe you just haven't found the right color red or the right color of orange because I'm not a huge orange fan it's actually my husband's favorite color um, but I don't mind like a coral kind of orange um, and red 
I have to say, I love a good red lipstick. I'm like, I don't use red a lot in my art. I will say that, Miss Judy. So that might be something I need to play with too. But I do love a good red lipstick. All right. Go, I'm pretty happy with this. I love it. It's got some texture. It's got some patterns. It obviously has a ton of color. Um, I'm going to add a couple things. So today's date is 6 21 is that right? Yep, 6-21-21. Yay. And then we're just going to throw just the one word promise right here since that's kind of been our focus and our thought process. Of, and I didn't want to do, since our whole thing was like, let's make just a big beautiful background. I didn't want to put a big old title on it um, and kind of cover up all of our hard work. But you obviously could totally do this however you want. That's just kind of how I'm feeling. So I think we are done. So I'm going to read our scripture. Um, I realized I never actually read it. I just told you what it was. So we are in Genesis 9, chapter, yes, Genesis 9, verse 12. And it says, and God says, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all future generations. I have placed my bow in the clouds and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I form clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all the living creatures. Water will never again become a flood to destroy every creature. The bow will be in the clouds and I will look at it and remember the permanent covenant between God and all the living creatures on the earth. And God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and every creature on earth. Um, and I think it's really interesting in that particular scripture, how many times God says, and I will remember. Um, let's be honest, God doesn't forget things, but I think sometimes we need to be reminded that God remembers. He doesn't leave us hanging out there. He doesn't get sidetracked dealing with someone else or he doesn't get worried about this or that. You know, I think that saying, God saying I will remember is more of just confirmation and a way of soothing us that God remembers us and that he remembers the promises that he makes, that he's never going to forget that no matter how crazy we might think the world is, that we still matter to God. Um, and so that is kind of where we're leaving it, that you matter to God and his promises are real and his promises are true. And that no matter what color of situation you're going through, that there's a promise in the Bible that goes with it. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I will put a picture of this finished page in our group. And um, feel free to tag people that maybe missed it um, or to watch the replay if you guys want to see more information. Um, and like I said, the list of which um, distress oxides I used are in the description for the video, but I'll also put them in the comments if that's easier. So thank you guys so much for joining me and have an amazing rest of your day and a great week, guys.